Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Design Recharge. I'm your host, um, Diane Gibbs, and I'm alone today. I'm doing a rapid recharge, but I'm actually not alone. I got 14 other people in here with me, and I'm so thankful for this crew of people that makes up the Design Recharge family. And you can be part of it too. All you'd have to do is sign up and you get a link and then you can come and you can chat. They're talking to each other. And um, I try to introduce everybody so that people know where they're coming in from. So I am super thankful. So yes, and Marie, it's difficult actually to do both, to do this, to talk and tell you something and um, read the chat. So it's really difficult for me to do. So Maria, you, you can do that for me. Um, I'll bug you in a little bit and you can tell me if there's anything cool that comes up. So she said squirrel over there in the corner or over in there in the chat. So Heather's here, a bunch of other people that I hadn't been able to say hey to yet. So thank you so much for coming. It really does make a difference to me when I do these, um, I guess soliloquies or whatever. So I want to talk to you about some things that I've been learning and some of them are not really um, not super proud of all of them, but I'm in the middle of growth and growth can be very, uh, growth is painful. You know, I, I, I never had growing pains cause I'm five one. I mean, I pretty much did I mean, in, you know, I think I was this height maybe in ninth grade, 10th grade, you know, I mean, it's not a, that's a lot of years to not grow very much. So, but some people who are really tall, like Josh Ash, he's pretty tall. Um, you know, you, you actually hit like a spurt and your body hurts. Well, I'm in a spurt, but it's a brain, I guess, or a heart kind of thing. Sometimes I feel like it's a, it's a pull between both. So I've been avoiding things and I've been avoiding things for a while. I mean, don't we all sort of do that a little bit? Um, and you know, we avoid, but really it just makes that thing that we're avoiding get bigger or more powerful, I think. And so I'm telling you this, but I'm right in the middle of it. Um, my friend Chris says, you got to teach what you're learning, not teach what you're an expert at. And so I thought about that. So I think about the three EXs. So one, you feel exposed. And I do. I feel exposed sharing this. I feel like, oh, I should have it together. And some of the stuff that we're going to talk about today, I really just feel like I'm, I feel like I'm drowning sort of. I feel like I'm just in the middle of the ocean. I'm just trying to um, keep my legs kicking so that I'm above water, you know, getting air. And then I also feel like the, the next EX is the expected. And I think that a lot of it's what we think other people expect of us, but it's not necessarily what other people expect of us. But it still is that expectations of, and it can really be super harmful. It's that we expect to get work doing this. We expect to try new things. We expect to do this, but we ex also expect to be successful at it. And how do you know? How do you know if you're even going to like it if you've never tried it? And then ex the other EX is experience. And I feel like when you're young, experience, you know you're going to get more experience. But when you're middle-aged like me, people are expecting you to have the experience. Whether that's doing the work or, but then how can you pivot? How can you change what you decide that you want to do with either a style or a type of work that you're doing or clients. And I feel like that's the benefit of our amazing industry is that we can pivot. We can do different things. Now it doesn't mean that you're going to make the same money, right? If I decide today to go out and do more UX UI, I don't have the experience behind me to go do. I've done a few pieces, but not like I can't make the same money that I'm doing at design, um, at print design or, or web design as I'm doing, if I was doing an app that I've never done an app before. So I feel like those are the three EXs that are, I'm getting hung up on. And some, I think other people are expecting, obviously some are things <laughs> that I'm expecting from myself, but I'm just putting them off on somebody else. And I've realized, so to kind of paint a little bit of a picture, I, um, I had a sabbatical in the January through May. 
And in that time, I was kind of recruited from another school. And I got a job offer. I didn't take it. Clearly, I'm in the same place I am. Um, I, I would have loved to have tried something new. I would have loved to have done something else. But it just wasn't in the cards this time. And so what happened was it kind of got me excited about doing something new. And I, was, I wasn't sure if I was so excited to leave something or was I excited to try something new? You know that, you know that feeling like when you're at a job or maybe you've been at a job or you're with a client and sometimes you just need to do something different so that it reinvigorates your relationship or your, so that you're looking at the client in a new way. So it was, I, w I was super thankful. I'm really glad I went through it. Um, but it, there's still some taste in my mouth or from this um, thing that I, I'm sad about that I, I, that I didn't take this, this position. And I am, you know, I'm, uh, I really try to be optimistic and look at what, what I have. And, and I, I ended up getting a raise where I am. So, it all worked out, but there was still something I kept thinking, Oh, you know, why am I so sad about this? Why? And whenever things get super hard, I tend to avoid certain things instead of like really digging down. So I think about like trench foot in world war two, world war one. I wasn't there, but, um, maybe excited is the fourth EX. So trench foot, you know, people were standing, there was so much rain and they were just standing in water, but they didn't care because they were alive, right? I mean, clearly, I think some people had to have, you know, legs amputated. There were, it was, trench foot was really, really bad. And I think about we avoid, but what they were avoiding was going across the lines or the, you know, they were just these bloody battles and the only time you or relieved was when you were in the trenches. So I feel like there are times in, in my life recently that have been like trench foot. Like I'm just putting up with this really yucky thing because I don't want to deal with the other yucky thing. And so, okay, so I'm avoiding it. It's because it's hard. So I have this taste in my mouth and I'm, I just really wasn't sure what I, what it was about, why I was so still so, I couldn't let it go, I guess. And I realized that I just wanted something. I really thought that that job would have been easier to some extent than what my current job is. And I think that I wanted a refresh. Like I wanted new, some new client interaction. I wanted new people interaction so that I could um, start over instead of having to deal with trench foot. So, but I feel like that's not the way God works. You know, sometimes you just got to face it. And, and that's what this is. So I'm in the battle and I, not that it's a battle, you know, I'm, I'm not saying I have a terrible job at all. Love, love what I do. Absolutely. I was just excited about trying something new somewhere else. And, but I don't think that that's always the way it is uh, or what we're supposed to do. It may be in the, um, in the future. So one of the things I've had issues with is not, uh, and what I dealt with during sabbatical was I would just sit, stand at my, um, my, I have a table like this. It's like a, a big drafting table and it has all my supplies on it. And I would just stand there deer in headlights. And I've talked to y'all about this before. Totally can't make anything. And, and this was like that, that trench foot. I'm just stuck in this and, and I'm not, I'm not moving forward. I'm stuck where I am and it, I wasn't able to get out. I didn't really know what I could do to motivate myself. I don't know if it was a motivation issue. So I just kept doing other things like in the trenches, I would uh, just do the things that I could do, you know, to make it as best as I could instead of dealing with getting my feet dry, right? and get dealing with the trench foot. So I realized that one of the things that has helped me get out of it was just to have small little goals that were not, that I didn't feel like 
had a big expectation connected to them. So I feel like when you're a kid, you, you try new things all the time. You may or may not like them. It's, you're not like committing your life to forever riding a bike. You know, you're just like, Hey, I'm going to try it today or, or skateboarding or whatever. And you're not like, I feel like for me now, it's like, if I commit to something, it's like, Oh, I'm going to have to do this forever. And I don't know why I feel like that. I don't know if you guys feel like that, but so when I am doing I, these small little commitments or so me and my friend Ellen, we've met for 15 years. This is my 15th year teaching here. We've met for 15 years. Once a week we eat lunch and we used to, in the beginning we would do these collage kind of exercises or we themes or we were just making stuff. You know, we weren't making amazing pieces of artwork. We were just kind of exploring and we were playing and we were having fun. And I feel like that's like when you ride a bike, when you're a kid or when you learn to swim or you're just, you know, you're going to fall. You expect that not everything's going to be great. And I don't know if it's just us being designers and we're perfectionists and we, I feel like I'm out of focus. Focus on, I don't know. Maybe that's a little bit better. Sorry. Sidebar there. So when you're a kid, you do these things and you don't even think about it. You don't worry about being uber committed, right? And you're just trying things, but you know you're going to fall. So you didn't go out in the yard with your best clothes on, or you didn't start learning something new right before you went out to dinner with your family and you'd already gotten a shower and stuff. You know, you, you like went out there with grubby clothes knowing you were going to fall. And so I keep thinking about, Oh, get back on the horse. We always hear this, but it's really, I think it's been really difficult for me to get back on the, the horse when it's not something I'm great at or when it's something that I'm, I, I feel like I expect myself to be better at it. And I'm using air quotes here for anybody who's listening. So, I needed to do something for the sheer enjoyment. And going back to the thing with Ellen and I, in the beginning, we would do these little collage projects, and then we took years off. We stopped doing anything just because we were busy, and then kind of have gotten back. So she has some uh, really strong commitments that she wants a release of making something, making art. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to do it as well. And so I've decided I'm just going to make some, have some exercises instead of making like art or um, trying a new style or any, I, I'm just going to make something because I want to have the fun of the exploration. So I did this. I mean, again, we, the, the thing was for this week was it's two inches by two inches and green. That was it. That was the only thing. So you guys saw this um, piece maybe. And one thing I like about it is that it says take, but you can tell it says take maybe but maybe not for sure. And it's just three little hands and it's just, it's not finished, you know, and it's, it's tiny and who cares, right? Um, maybe, I don't know. So to me, it, but it was fun. I just cut stuff out and I put stuff down and if I didn't like it, I t pulled it back up, but it was just for the sheer enjoyment and it was fun. And I haven't let myself have fun like that in a while because I'm always expecting it to be and I need it to make money or I need, I have this, this goal of it doing something else. And it's not like I didn't ever ride a bike thinking, hmm, you know, I could, I could uh, deliver people's uh, dinners or I could deliver, uh, you know, newspapers. I never thought about it ever like a business. And so for me, there's been some enjoyment loss in the creation. Yeah, so Doc's saying the same thing. He hates when he puts expectations on the work I do outside of work. Yeah, it's been really, really hard for me to enjoy. So I've been avoiding things because they were hard. So that's my trench foot. And so now I'm not. I'm just going to try to face them. And one way for me is I know I need to cut things out because it's not as precious if I cut them out. So for me, I really like collage and I like to um, 
all some of the watercolor illustrations I've done, they don't seem as bad to me because I am cutting them up. So if I mess up, it's not that big of a deal because I can just cut it out or I can put something on top of it. They totally can steal the joy, Maria just said. Expectations are joy stealers. All right, so, um, and the subhead for this episode, for this rap rapid recharge, or the title was, what was it? It was something, um, measure, practice, measure, pivot. There's no, like, analyze in there. I mean, obviously, you are doing some of that. And there's no planning, because Playing isn't really about a plan. It's not like, ooh, I'm going to play, put all my colors out. And then I, you just do. It's just about, it's about the action of practice. And for me, that's been a really hard thing. So the subhead was no recital scheduled. Because again, that has to do with expectations. I think the recital is when everybody's watching, you know, and you're sitting down at the piano or you're showing your work and you're, you're having a show, right? Like a show an exhibit of all your work. And that's not what I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not trying to have a show. I'm not trying to do anything other than just practice and just make and explore. And I feel like when you're stuck, this is a great way for me to been getting out. So Matt says, I'm describing a lot of his struggles too absolutely we are allowed to play it does give life and we need it but i've been so trench foot that i haven't gotten out of the trenches to get to where i need to go i've just been stuck there and i've also i haven't allowed myself the joy of so so last week's first week of school and um, this girl, Danielle, who seems really cool. I've never had her before, but she says to me, so she's like, okay, so Matt's the other professor. He's at illustrator and Alma's typography. What are you? And I was like, oh no, what am I? And so I'm like, no, you know, I think I should be able to know. And in our mastermind group, I've asked that same question. I'm like, you know, I don't really know. I feel like I'm really in a, um, I told my sister last week, I said, I'm really in a self-discovery stage. I feel like I started it in January, but then I put it on hold and then, and got busy because being busy was easier than dealing with the trench foot. So I'm trying to deal with the trench foot now. So hopefully you guys can help me stay on track, which obviously I need a lot of uh, accountability. So um, I have notes, but they're not like super great notes. And I've got lots of little drawings on there as well. Um, I need to enjoy things. I don't need to have a plan with everything, especially new things. And so, uh, Andy J. Miller talks about doing, having the creative side quest and he has a side projects and those are two different things. And I think sometimes when you're trying to figure out where you are and what you're known for, um, and you don't have to have a label. Absolutely. But here's where I'm, Hey Joey, here's where I'm cut running into problems when I'm trying to pitch what I have. Hey Dave, um, when I'm trying to pitch what I'm doing to a, a new client or when I'm trying to sell myself to somebody else, I, I'm going to show you some of the work I've done. And I mean, it's all over the place. So I don't know if you'd be able to tell me, you know, it's like, oh, well, she does a lot of things. And I actually don't think that that's bad. So I feel like I do a lot of branding and strategy maybe, um, and branding bigger than just a logo, right? But I really do feel like I, I want to do other things. I want to be an illustrator, but somebody asked me, so this lady who, follows, I mean, you know, she's a friend and she works in administration. So she does like assessment and stuff for the university. So she sat down with not, she wasn't assessing me, but I have to assess the grad students. Anyway, you don't care about them. So her and I, she's like, Oh, I've seen your stuff on Facebook. And I was like, Oh, okay, thanks. You know, and she likes things or whatever. And she's like, well, what are you going to do with those? And I'm like, it's just like that kid asking me like, well, what's your thing? And I feel like I should have 
it's not that I should have. I feel like I want to be able to say something. I want someone to be able to say, hey, Diane, go to her for blank. And I do think part, like Dave and I are very similar. Dave Clayton, he's very much a people person, very much a connector. And I feel like that's one of my things. I feel like that's, that's one of my things. But I also want to be known for something in design that I'm, that you guys would say she's good at this. Um, and I don't think I have to. So Mark's saying he feels the same way. But I feel like I want to because I actually feel like I will be, it will be easier for me to help someone if I have, um, if I have a package to show them. Yes, can I do other things? Absolutely. But I don't think that that's, um, I think I should be able to tell people, I want people to be able to say, oh yeah, use Diane for this. And that's big, been for me the biggest worry, the biggest holdup of getting my website up. Um, so I definitely think I'm a community builder. Maria says that. And Doc says a people lover, but how do you, how do you sell that? You know, I can't be in line at Starbucks. Of course I wouldn't be in line at Starbucks because I don't drink coffee, but pretend I'm there for somebody else. And they ask me what I do. And I say, I'm a designer. And then my, the next answer or the next question, or the next thing I usually say is, um, you know, I, I mean, there's tons of, yes, we're going to talk about this a lot in Michigan. Doc says, um, you know, the next thing I say is I, I help people make their dreams come true because I feel like that's what we do as designers. We, somebody has this dream, this, so I feel like I help a lot of entrepreneurs. I help small businesses, medium sized businesses actually help get their stuff out to market. And in whether that's their website, whether that's um, collateral pieces, whether that's ads, social media advertising, who knows? It, it can be all those things, but I think of those as part of the brand. So, but for me, um, so Dave says, I find I create 10% of my 100% ideas, but that's okay. I enjoy the community side and seeing, oh yes. So I feel like I have, the community is huge. It's uh, absolutely critical for me. Like I, I am not one of those designers. I'm going to focus again. I'm not one of those designers that um, can just, sit in my house alone and, and I really need you. I mean, I need you every week. Okay. Some of you, I need you more than that. Um, and, and I really appreciate my friendship. I need that. Like I am a very social interactor, but I also want someone to say, Oh yeah, go to her for this. And so I was talking to one of my friends who's kind of uh, coaching them through some things and she's getting ready to leave her job and getting ready to go freelance. And so I said, okay, well, you know, there's a couple things I think you need to do. So there's four things we're going to talk about. One, you need to go and tell people and show people what you're looking to do. So for me, I'd like to do, be, be an illustrator, but I'm not there yet. I'm still exploring. So when Cecilia asked me, well, what are you going to do with those things? I have no idea, lady. I have no idea. Um, I would like to do something. It hasn't come to me. I'm okay not knowing right now how, I mean, I, I don't draw someone how they look. So it's not like somebody can be like, oh, can you do my family? No, I can't. Can't do your family. You know, I'm going to make you have huge noses probably. Um, so I'm not there, but can I communicate a message? Absolutely. I just don't know yet. And I'm, I'm okay not knowing where I want to be. I think it's good to have a plan. We'll get to that in a second. Um, so I do think if, so say this, this friend of mine, she wants to do more freelance. She needs to be able to tell people so that her other friends can say, oh yeah, she does this. So that they know how to sell you to other people. Like my friend Karina, she said, she's amazing branding, amazing, does amazing logos, illustrations. I've interviewed her. She's amazing. If I needed somebody to do branding or brand strategy or just, I would, I would go to Karina. She would be the first person that I would like think about with that. If I need somebody to do lettering or chalk or I'd go to Kim Pinella. 
Um, and I can't keep up with all this. So, oh, so Mark says that's how he feels all the time, especially since his job is CCTV. What do you do? I do CCTV and sometimes I draw and paint. Absolutely. Um, that's how it feels. Like I feel like I need some sort of realm to be able to, when you're, a, when you're tea on the shelf, there's all different kinds of tea, right? Some are really strong, some are light and fruity, but I need somehow people to be able to pick and say that they want this kind of tea. And I, I feel like I don't have that. I feel like I've, I'm the most generic box of tea, the, the white with the black type, which isn't bad, but I need to do something else. Hey, mom. Okay, so the next thing you have to do, I think, is you need to tell people how they can use you. And you need to show them. So you need to show um, work consistently. And so if I just did this one little collage and that's it, you would never think of me as doing collage, ever, right? I gotta read what Dave says. Dave says his job at Astute Graphics is astute graphics training manager and networker. So while in design a lot, so while he's doing in design a lot less, he's learning more about design and illustration from great people. Absolutely. Um, but you're also like Dave has, is super funny. If you guys YouTube um, uh, do a search for Dave Clayton, you'll come up, you'll see some really funny videos. So there's humor and he obviously is doing humor and he's a great connector. Um, and he's cuddly, of course. Um, all right, so Doc says, I think specialties are celebrated by the design community, but generalists are the workhorses for the industry. So absolutely, I've never had to, um, you know, I've never had to go and get a job at, um, at Lowe's or as a waitress. I always think I can do that if I need to. I've never had to. So I've always had enough work coming in, but there are times when it is really, really um, then, and I just want my team, which is y'all, my network, my family to be able to say, oh yeah, Diane can do that. So, and sometimes it's that maybe we're too integrated with other designers, you know, because now we need a specialty because we need to stand out from each other. But I also feel like, you know, I mean, my mom thinks I can do anything. My sister thinks I can do anything and I can't do everything. Right. But like, if I need somebody that has, you know, a specific skill, I want to be able to go to that person because I don't necessarily like logo design all, I mean, I do it, but sometimes I will farm out the icon part because I really enjoy doing the type part or, and so I need to know who to go to. So it's about what you're showing people. So if you're only showing people, so this person that I was coaching, I said, hey, I think you should show, I think you should try to post at least three times a week work that you've done, work that you've done in the past that you currently want to continue doing. And Andy J. Miller talked about doing these book, he thought he wanted to do like illustrate books, fiction books like Moby Dick or Alice in Wonderland. And he realized after doing some of these, he didn't enjoy it. He thought that was what he wanted to do. And after he did the side project, he realized this isn't what he wanted to do. And I feel like we need these side projects and we need to be about, we need help. We need to be helping each other um, and keeping each other accountable about what we're doing for this exploration. What are you doing as a side project? Not a side quest as Andy Miller calls the bigger picture part. If you guys haven't heard that, you should listen to the creative pep talk. There's a whole series of the creative side quests. It's been terrific just so you guys know. Um, all right, so I'm trying to read the chat and I really can't. Okay, so you gotta tell people, um, you gotta show people and tell people what you're looking to do. And if you don't currently do that, then you need to try it and, and try it maybe a 30 day project. Doesn't mean you have to do 30 days consecutively, but you need to have in your feeds or in your posts that, people could go back and see that this is something that you do. Then number two was telling people how they can use you. So you also need to reach out to people, connect with people. And I would say try to connect with people four days a week. Um, so whatever you're trying to do, do it four days a week. Whether it's doing little collages four days a week, I need to do that four days a week. Whether it's I'm trying to get more 
freelance work doing PowerPoint presentations. I'm not really. I mean, I can, but I'm not. That's not what I'm going for. But do you know? Blah. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Um, you need to. People need to be like, oh yeah, she does that because, to be honest. This is, this is like the Jason Karn thing that happened a few years ago where he was like, I'm going to leave the industry. I'm going to go back to construction. And uh, Jason does this tiny little stippling. You know, and I, um, the other day, Terrence Tang, who I've had on, I love Terrence. If you guys don't know him, you should just go and give him, um, I have this other plan. I'll tell you about it at the end. Anyway, so Terrence posted the other day and he's re been really kind of in a, in a yucky place. And I just think, um, you also have to tell people where you are. So he's not in as bad of a place now. So Terrence is, uh, is doing better, but he kind of shared this on Facebook and I think Instagram yesterday or Monday. I don't know. The day sort of rolled together. Sorry. So that's number three is that you need to let your community rally around you. And uh, two weeks ago or three weeks ago, you guys rallied around me and I really felt it and I really, really appreciate it. I got so many emails and it just made such a difference to me. It's just like now, there's tons of people in here and I really, really appreciate it. So Carly says, I make weird sculptures and photograph them. They are not weird, honey. They are the cutest things ever. And then I write stories and use my photos to illustrate them. But oh yes, you are an author um, and you are an illustrator. For sure. These, um, Carly, you, you guys, Carly, put your um, handle in the chat if you don't mind, because they are amazing. And they're so cute. Like, you just want to hug them. And they're tiny little things. Anyway. But you got to show people what you do. You got to tell people what you do. And then you've got to tell people where you are. So you've got to let that, so that exposed, talking about the EXs again, you really feel exposed. You feel like, I don't want to show people that I'm not successful. But really, you know, to you, success might be one thing. To them, success might be something else. And they may be further, oh, they may think of you as really gotten it, which is fine. And it's good to know that everything's not going to be smooth sailing. You know, that I think it's a, it's a rough journey, right? It's a, it's a battle and there's going to be times of um, peace and then there's going to be times of battle and there's going to be times of trench foot. And if you miss that part, you'll just have to back to the beginning and listen. Um, okay. So number four, and this is the last thing. So even though you feel exposed, you just have to do it because you will be so blessed with the people that are around us and that we spend time with that encourage us. And so I can't, Thank you enough for the phone calls and just people checking in. All right. Um, and number four, what does success look like? And how will I know when I get there? So I have an idea. I don't know what success looks like for an illustrator. I don't know if that means I'm doing these collages and I'm working for a magazine. I don't know because I haven't done my project first. Um, I'm working on just creating some things right now consistently. And that's all I'm doing. I'm just trying to be consistent and post them out, show you what I'm doing. And I'm, I'm asking for feedback. You know, I want, Hey, try this Diane or do this. Um, and we're always, we always have room for improvement for sure. So I've been watching this show. It's a great Northern. Um, we watch some weird Netflix shows, you know, but it's about auctions and they go to these um, storage wars, sort of, they go to these storage bin locker things and then they bid so it's like I mean there's lots of people but there's like five people that they really the show is following um and this is what I love that you guys are still like over there in the chat just talking to each other I I just this is why design recharge is design recharge because you guys are um are are who makes it it's not me it's everybody and so I'm just very thankful to be part of this family okay so you have to bid at these auctions, right? So for me being in trench foot, I wasn't bidding. I was, I was just going, but I wasn't ever putting anything out there. So because I didn't want to be exposed either as a fake, right? Or, Oh my gosh, she thinks she can illustrate. That's what I think people are saying, you know? So one of the way, ways that I talked about, 
I have to make it so that it works for me. So cutting them um, makes it easier for me so that I don't feel like I'm going to be messing something up. And I think people who have an iPad, it's probably maybe a little bit easier, but I don't have an iPad. So it, I don't, I can't draw on my iPad pro. So I'm, I got to figure out what tools, but I don't need an iPad. Like I'm okay. I'm good with cutting things out. I think that's a, a good part and it really resonates with me not to do it digitally. So I'm really thankful for that. So you just got to go with what, what works for you. So I know that it can't be so precious. And I feel like we do that. I think doc was talking about that, that it can be too precious. Whatever we do, we put the expectations, the other EX, we put expectations and then we're exposed and then we're showing that we're a failure, right? Because maybe we have or haven't defined what success is. So if I know that I want in five years to be an illustrator, then I have to work backwards and how do I get to that place? But I know the first thing, I don't know if that's what I want to do, but I know the first thing is I need to do a 30 day project that has to do with illustrations, whether it's collage, these doing these little, my goal is to do that four times a week. So that's what I'm challenging you, whatever it is, whatever it is you feel like you need to be working on that maybe you're not facing up to, or you're not putting in the time to do it. Make it small and do it four days a week, whether that's connecting with somebody um, or making like I really like to talk to somebody that I don't know online like this. I mean, obviously not alone. I mean, face to face, the other person's face, my face. I like to do that once a week, not not considered design research, but another like meeting somebody. And I haven't done that in a while because I've been in trench foot. Okay, so when people have asked me recently, what am I known for? It is very discouraging that, that, you know, some of my best friends wouldn't really be able to tell me or help me. Um, yeah, so if you have, so Jason's saying he needs to focus on finishing his talk and then he can take on something else. You're already doing it. You need to spend four days a week working on your talk. That's your 30 day thing. Or that's your, um, mm, and Josh says holding holding things too dear. That's where the preciousness comes in. And that's, I think it, for me, it's really, I, I just, I shut down and it, I can't do it. So I have to do things really small or I have to do things that I'm cutting them out. That way I don't feel so precious. Now I did, I did do, now this is an exercise, right? I'm not saying anything, but I'll, I'm going to post this later, but I haven't finished it yet. But there was a YouTube video on like painting the negative space. And so you start with the, the foreground, a really light wash. And then you do all these leaves go back. And I know I messed up. Like I get it, but it's an exercise. So I feel okay about doing this exercise. There's one lemon. See it? Um, and I know what I would do differently. And so I have this one and I'm going to try, these are going to be oranges. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing a little bit bigger. Right. Um, so, but again, I'm this whole board this whole sheet is not precious because I'm using it I'm exploring I do want to do some details but I'm just trying thing oh cool Matt he says he's doing the same thing um but so I was like okay I like this because I like the depth and it was really just an exercise and I'm okay with exercises now if it's an eight by ten I'm not sure it's an exercise right and if it's the first time I'm doing it I feel like I should just explore and I'll put a link to whoever this girl was um, in the show notes. Okay, so it's it's preparing to fall. So it's wearing the knee pads, going out with a helmet, knowing that you're gonna fall. Like, I don't think my dad was like, oh, she's gonna get up on the bike. Yeah, maybe, but might not be today, you know? I guess I think we expect to just get on the bike and go, and I, I think we need to not do that because I think it, especially when we're trying new styles or new things, it makes it really difficult and we're having issues focusing. At least I have a little focus out. All right. So, um, so getting work, right? If you're wanting to get more work, but you don't, aren't able to tell people you need to be able to do that. Okay. So here's my idea with, um, Terrence. I think we all, it's really hard for us to share where, when we're really raw and when things aren't going so great. So I think it would be really cool. And I don't know, you guys can tell me if you think this is a good idea or not. And really I want feedback 
like that's a stupid idea that that would be totally fine but i think it would be cool if we have this like package and we can say maybe it maybe we create these different types of packages and then it's kind of like a love on designers thing i think and when somebody you know somebody's having that that you can just have it sent to them you can purchase it and have it sent to them i think that would be so amazing the other thing I think would be amazing is if we all, if you know Terrence or if you like his work, so Tin Lun, T I N L U N Studio, I think that's what it is. Maybe somebody can look that up for me. Um, just go and tell him how much you um, appreciate him or just give him some love because I feel like that's where we can rally. That's where we can be super strong and we are like the beaver crew, right? Because beavers are my spirit animal. Um, and we can we can embody that community of being this amazing beaver family. Thank you, Maria. Okay. All right. Um, the one thing, another thing, is you may have something that you're doing that you're making and you want to sell it, but it has to always be about the customer and how that thing makes their life better. And I've learned a ton of the stuff from Don Miller with Story Brand. If you haven't read that book, um, Building a Story Brand, or he has a podcast, the Story Brand podcast, it's great. I've learned a ton about kind of positioning for companies. It's really, really terrific, just so you know. But how does whatever it does focus on them and help them be better or focus on their better features or whatever? So what have you been avoiding? What do you, are you so not ready to have a recital at? And it's totally fine. So that was the subhead was no recital scheduled. I actually feel like I don't want a recital scheduled. I just want to make some stuff and then we'll see. And then maybe I can make work and then maybe, um, maybe I'll have a recital later. Right. But I'm not even in a recital. I feel like this has been a big problem for me is that I've planned the recital and I haven't even played the first note on the piano. And I, I just think we're getting way too far ahead of ourselves. So sometimes planning, not always the best idea. Um, so for me, I'm going to make two inch collages four days a week. That's something I can measure. So remember the beginning practice, right? I need to practice. I need to measure. And measuring, am I growing? Am I getting faster? Am I making better decisions? Are my collages getting better? Am I having fun? Do I see a way that I could actually use this for a client? That's not, that, those are just things that I can measure. I could also measure how many um, likes I get on a post. Um, but that can't be the only measurement that I have. I have to be able to see if, is anybody emailing me to get work? Or is any, like if you see something, if you don't know how to use it, you're never going to call me to use it, right? So you have to make it clear how somebody else could use your thing, your skill, your product. Um, I, need, I need to know how I can use it if I'm your customer. I also can measure, and I really haven't measured with Design Recharge. I, I talked to Chris Doe in February, and he kind of got me on it that I really needed to start measuring things. And so I started. And so really I, all I do right now is I just look, I uh, track my YouTube stats and I track my Google Analytics stats and I track my SoundCloud, which is where the podcast comes out um, or the, where the feed lives. And that being able to measure and see some growth has really been helpful. And Amy's helping me on a project that's another stage that I haven't gotten there yet, Amy. I appreciate your help, and I'm, I'm going to get there. But I'm overwhelmed right now. With So I'm also not trying to take on more things. I'm trying to do small changes and track things. So one thing Chris has had said to do was have more tags on my YouTube videos and more tags on SoundCloud so you were able to find things. Also, he said, so if you're doing videos, this was a huge, this has been huge for my numbers. Not that I'm making any money off of this yet, people, but it's been huge for my numbers, is that in the beginning, the first paragraph is just a whole bunch of kind of like headlines, different headlines that 
would go along with the video or that people would be searching for that maybe were things that we talked about in the interview. And those have been huge. And I have seen huge um, number. My uh, numbers are climbing more than I, granted, I wasn't really watching them before. But if you go back and you looked at different, um, you know, sometimes it was like 400 downloads a week or even 400 downloads a month. Now it's like 1400 in a week. And to me, that's, that's a huge win. And I feel like I'm making progress because I'm also pivoting. So I was doing everything the same. And then Chris Doe came in and he said, Hey, why don't you try this? So I did. And now I've seen where that pivot changes. He also gave me some other tips that I can do that me and Amy are working on and that hopefully will help me pivot even more anyway. So, um, all right, so then, you know, if I'm doing these things four times a week, if you're looking for work, you need to be posting that type of work or something that you want to be doing four times a week. Not the exact same thing, you know, people, you got to be having new things, but how can you show that? But maybe it's about connecting. You know, me and Dave are connectors, so maybe we need to connect with more people. Maybe we need to email more people um, on a regular basis. And maybe, maybe if that's an area of weakness or something that I'm trying to develop that muscle, if that's you, then um, you need to go, then maybe you need to start reaching out on LinkedIn or, or commenting in Instagram and starting a conversation. So I thought, you know, you can really email, you can do in person, you could meet somebody for coffee if you drink coffee or you could do on screen like I like I like to do. All right, we're almost done. Okay. Um, the thing about at some point, everybody wants to come to your recital. I really feel like. Um, so I'm going to, um, Kim, I don't know if you're still in here, but I'm going to call you out. Yeah, she is. Oh, hey, Louise. Um, so Kim had a big win. And her and I were talking about it. She's like, well, I don't really want to post it. I don't want people to think I'm. I hope this is okay. Boy, I guess you cannot be friends with me after this. Um, but you know I love you. But I think a lot of people deal with this. And I just had somebody share another win with me. And when somebody shares a win with me, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I never am thinking like, oh my gosh, who's that Kim girl thinks she is? Getting that whatever kind of award. Kim like won, I think, based on her Orlando Magazine cover that she did this huge like wall size thing. You guys should go check KimPanella.com. Um, she won like this big, some big awards for it. Like the, the magazine put it in and it won some big awards. Anyway, see, I saw that. It looks amazing. Carly said, I saw that. Congrats. So to me, this is huge and people want to rally just like we want to rally around Terrence or anybody else who's hurting. You know, I, I, I feel like it's like a joy project, right? We just send them some love and send them some joy because they've made a difference to us. And I just feel like we should do that for Terrence. Anyway, that's who our person should be this week. So to me, when Kim, we, you know, but we don't necessarily want to share that we won something because we don't want it to, we want to be humble, but we also, this is the recital. That's the recital, Kim. We got to share. We got it. And it, you know, Lord, if you're getting all these awards, amazing. That's awesome. Now it might get a little too much for the little people down here who aren't winning so many awards, but it's not, you haven't been. I, I really do feel like people want to rally. People want to be like, I'm friends with her. I helped her or, or, I loved on her until, you know, do you know what I mean, you guys? So I am so excited and I hope you guys share with me any, I love sharing your wins. Somebody texted me just, just before this got in print for the first time to me. I thought, I mean, I haven't ever gotten in print magazine. I mean, some of you guys are probably all over print, but I'm not. I mean, and granted, I've only tried to get in like two or three times, but I know you got to play to, you got to be at the auction and you got to bid to win. Right. But I think it's said, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean I feel any better. Once I get the award, does Kim feel different that she has that award than she did the day before? No, she doesn't. But it is really nice that somebody else in our industry 
values us. And I feel like we can do that with each other. Sorry. I guess because it's usually not me alone. I'm really have focusing issues. I could tell when my glasses get blurry. I know it's weird. I'll keep holding this owl up if you're watching this. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so I want to show you. Can I show you? Do you guys have a second? Um, I'm going to share my screen. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go through this whole thing because you're probably like, holy crap, there's 117 slides, Diane. We're not going to go through all of them. So this is, if I was, I gave this presentation today to my class. And, you know, this is where I've lived. So you guys may not know, but I've done, worked in publication design for a long time. So I've worked, um, I did my own magazine. This was one of them. I, I it's where I started in Denver. I worked for a, a Memory Makers Magazine, Scrapbooking Magazine. And we started this, me and two other women, and it was free and it was great. And then the, the stock market crashed, so we had to stop. The train on the right, I took a picture of. I did these brochures. Again, nothing's really consistent, right? Here's the other magazines. It's one awards. This was a really cool catalog. It was beautiful. It's Thomas and Thomas fly fishing rods. Um, you know, this is something I'd never done. This is pro bono. So I did something I, I wanted to do that was different. So I do a lot of publication design. I use, I used to do this. Um, these are physical books. I did all the covers for the college of arts and sciences. It's 19 departments. So you got to think like biology to army ROTC and art and music and drama, you know, it's, it's history, English, all of that's in here. And then two years ago, I don't know what I was doing, but when I was chair, I actually redesigned the inside and it was going to be all digital. So I ended up getting all these, buying these images and whatnot. So I did this and this is, I really like the, um, the fun of doing a uh, piece that I, I like all the moving parts. It's very similar to web design because there's, there's structure. There has to be structure do print design. So there's a poster staying behind me. This one I really like. This Maddox Schuler actually did this type who I interviewed Matt, Maddox. Um, and if you want to watch that, you can. But this, so this is a client who is a pro bono. I do all these posters and they're really long and skinny. And it was about the Civil War. So I took these Library of Congress images because they don't have money to pay for images. So I did Library of Congress and then I cut it in half because it's this really you know, it's the time when our country was cut in half. And to me, you know, it, it's a sheer kind of rip. One of the things they wanted was they want all of their presenters on the same poster. I'm like, oh my goodness, how am I going to be able to do this? So, but I did. So all those blocks in between um, Lincoln and the, you know, all the Civil War people um, are the people who were speaking. And it's kind of hidden in there. So it's sort of... It's in there, but it's not the first thing you see. So um, there's that. Let me keep going. Here's some more. I get to try to play with things. This isn't a great, but I was trying something different. This, these were like illustrated collage pieces that I had done. This one I really liked. This was about um, oh Vietnam. And all these things, those lines represented, were just because they left all these people dead. And they didn't bury him, nothing. And so and it didn't matter how old you were, if you were a man, a woman, or a child. So that's why some of the line, lines are longer, some of them are shorter. And it was just this, you know, mass killing, which I thought, you know, obviously, unless you knew about it, you might not know that. Um, <laughs> all right, here's something I did for kick-ass coders. It was for women in computer science and engineering. This is one of my clients. This is where Jackson is today at Walks and Wags. Um, so doggy daycare. They did studies to know that their best clients or their the clients that are their ideal clients are golden retriever owners and lab owners. So now we use those Im that imagery way more than we did with anything else. But you got to measure it. You got to be able to track it. So I've done advertising. I always think these are fun. I'm just going to share them. So Boo Radley, a great, it's a dog, uh, it's a dog friendly bar in downtown Mobile. And it says a great place to go after a long day at work. And then one says where no one leaves thirsty. And then the one where they're running, it says last one there buys the beer. I just thought it was funny. So this is obviously very different. Um, this is a retirement residence in San Francisco, the Bay Area, in Cupertino. And so we had this whole series that was these 
swooshy things that I think they're like Von Glitschka's in this book and you can use them anyway. Um, oh, boogers. I didn't mean to zoom in. You guys probably couldn't even see that. But then this, I go back. You know where I learned about Library Congress? Bethany Heck on Design Recharge, people. It's free. Dave, you guys have, um, there's some, the British Museum or British something, that you guys have something like our Library of Congress, which I guess, I don't know if you could use Library of Congress, maybe. Um, but every, or I guess the Brits and we have um, these images. So this is like some Harvard thing. So I didn't have to pay. The only thing I had to pay for was that diploma. But like you get these kind of old imagery and I think I clipped out the other stuff and I got the other little memorabilia when I went to some antique places. But to me, I, I won awards for this and this was a really big series and it could be really big because everything wasn't, it didn't always, wasn't always the same, but it was for the retirement residents. And I really like, this is more in that same series, more library content. Anyway, logos, I do all that type for the museum. I did invitations. This is another logo. Here's design recharge stuff that you probably have all seen. Here's pull up banners. And I just really like history. And I've always liked history. So maybe there's something. So she does a lot of stuff with history and helping people tell their story. So this was kind of neat. Um, but I don't have time to go through all this. I've do, done web design. I'm just flipping through. So I did the logo. I did the web design. And I've also done um, here's Walks and Wags web. This is uh, Mommy Masters in Tampa. Another retirement residence in Colorado. And then social media. Um, brochure or uh, catalogs or something from um, when you're going to a conference. You know, you have those, the order of whatever, you know, what's going to happen on Tuesday. These are three um, social media videos. And then Kim and I did Love on Designers, which you guys hopefully know. And then this was, this was amazing. You talk about tracking. This client was able to meet their goals in a week after we started. And most of the time was, um, they, we met two stretch goals and they totally went hog wild on what they were wanting to do. So this is one love that walks and wags lets me do their Christmas cards. And this is actually, so the background was mainly a, um, it's all watercolor. And then I just put it together because it wasn't working as one watercolor. And then wherever I had messed up, I just put the balls. Those are separate pieces. And I put some other leaves. This is a completely built. So every piece is different. And then this is the inside of those, um, uh, security envelopes. I've loved them for a long time. I'm not sure if this is a cow or a pig. Uh, it's a, a, cow wig cow wig maybe something new um a cow wig yeah um this is something i did in jane oops oh boogers what happened this is something i did in january i know i've shown you guys this how down that's what my husband said it says slow down it's something i did for church but i really hadn't done a person so i felt like he was okay I, I was pretty proud of that person and then there's paula doc i knew you'd um appreciate she finally got a friend you guys saw her hopefully um, I haven't named her yet. Maybe I need a name. But I did do some illustrations. Anyway, we don't care about that. Oh, did you guys know that I wrote two chapters in a book? Maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. Doc's in there. Doc's in there. Here's. It has a purple cover now. And I can you guys see me? Anyway, um, yeah, Ben's book. And so Ben wrote all this amazing um, stuff. And then, so now the books. But I wrote two chapters. But see, these are things I don't tell people. Anyway, um, then my skate deck, which I think most of you guys have seen. I did the inside of security envelopes. Really, really had fun doing this. This is just a, this is kind of me trying to show people what I do. And I know I'm all over the place. But for me, this side project is something I really liked. And then I think that's all. Yeah. Oh, and then you've seen the beavers. So I'm going to stop because we're, it, I know it's over time and my mom's like, my goodness, you went long today, honey. Um, anyway, those are the things I wanted to talk to you about. I am still working on Patreon and I hope by the end of this month, which I know is Saturday or Friday, Saturday, one of these days, 
it's one of these days, really coming soon. Um, I'm going to have it up. I really, here's what I need from you. I need to know, I'm going to do a $1, a $2, and a $5. I want to know what you would want from me. I could send you, I have cards I've made, I have stickers. I don't know, what can I do? What can I send you? What could I, what could a $5, you know, thing be? What would, what would be an incentive for you to give me $5 a month? And I, I mean, I know I could do more, but I don't, I, I am, I am really needing feedback on what I could do for the $1. I feel like that's just a, a gift. And then I appreciate that you'll get the first known. And then I think $2, um, I think that'll be a Facebook group. I thought about doing a more focused Facebook group for the $5, but I don't think so. Or I could do that later. Anyway, I want to know what you think about the joy package. I also want to know what you, um, what you think about Patreon and, and you don't have to support, but that would be one way. And I just want to thank you guys so much for just being, being my design family and holding my feet to the fire and getting me out of trench foot. So I'm going to do four collages. So if you're not seeing those, you should be like totally, where's that collage? So I'm still in green. I think we're still, me and Ellen are still doing green. Of course she did blue, but whatever. You can do whatever, <laughs> wherever you go. There's no real rules. We're not expecting. And what are you going to do? What, what do you need to show people? Matt, I think me and you are in the same place, right? Um, I want to know where you're going to go. And do you think four, doing something small, four times a week is too much. So maybe, maybe you go to three, maybe you need to make more connections. So maybe you try to spend 30 minutes, three times a week connecting with, with people. Hopefully it was helpful. I love you too, Amy. I love everybody. And I'm super thankful. I'm going to have to go back, um, and go back and read, um, bonus episode once a month, Jeremy. I love that idea. Um, Anyway, I just want you to know we are a family and I'm super thankful. So if you want to connect with me, you can always connect with me on Design Reach on, on Design Research. Hello, you wouldn't be here. I want you to connect with me on social media. Have you guys heard of that? Um, um, I'm at Design Recharge on Instagram and Twitter, and you can always email me, um, Diane at rechargingyou.com. Yes, we definitely need to do another for sure, Mark. Absolutely. I mean, all these, it's, we're about to hit tor tornado season. We're about to hit hurricane season. Joey had it in Hawaii and she was saved by the mountains, thankfully. Um, just so you guys know, Joey's here. And then, um, man, I was thinking about you, Joey, but Mark's in Bermuda. So he's going to get a bunch of it too. So all of us in this Dave, I guess you're not going to worry about hurricane season um, in the UK. I don't think you guys have that stuff over there. And no hurricanes in Colorado, for sure. Oh, yeah. Hey, Matt, you're, are you in Colorado Springs, too? I don't remember. No, Loveland. Oh, way too far away. Anyway, um, I was just, you and Josh Lewis, you're both in Colorado. But that's kind of, I don't know, two and a half hours away. All right, guys. Um, I just um, am very thankful. Thank you. You can always um, support the show now uh, by sharing it, which I really appreciate everybody who always does that. And, um, and then give a review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. And I just am so thankful. So hopefully, Mom, it wasn't too long. And I will see you guys next week. It, it's um, a part two. So it's going to be... I'm going to be talking about some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about at UCDA um, where a bunch of us are going, Doc and Jason and, and Brian and Mike Jones and um, Shauna, um, my friend Megan. So I can't wait. Um, if you want to go to Grand Rapids and see us all, that would be awesome. I would love to see you guys. Oh, and Draplin, he'll be there. Do you guys know who that is? I'm just kidding. Um, so, and, and Josh, I appreciate you too. So thank you guys. Hold me to the fire. I am going to do my collages and you will see some more exercises and I really need feedback. So, um, 
you know, if you see something I could do or you found a cool, fun, quick exercise, send it to me because I want to do it and I want to make more because it really does make me happier. Um, all right. I'm going to close it off. See you guys next week. If you're on YouTube, hit like and share and um, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. I'm interested to know.